What is up? It is Blynn and I'm back looking like some kind of Trixie Mattel reject. I actually just did a makeup collaboration with somebody on IG Live with a friend of mine. We have a lot of fun doing these, you know, we do these most weeks and we have a lot of fun just having fun with makeup, wigs, doing silly TikToks, all of that. But the reason why I'm here is because Alexis Stone has popped off. Alexis Stone popped off off about drag race on instagram stories so there's a lot it's like oh bitch 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 alexis wrote drag race just isn't the fantasy i have friends that have been on and are on that are so talented but the show itself is just trash and it's past its sell-by date. They spend 90% of the show out of drag, and what was cunty 10 years ago has been so squashed into uncomfortable narratives about family losses, exploiting someone's lowest moments for a desperate chart-topping song, bizarre stories from school that really contribute nothing towards what drag should be as an end result, which every single gay or queer person has experienced, drama that ruins real people's lives and embarrassing toilet humour and foolery on TV. It ain't the fantasy for so many of us, trust me. You can become famous without it, without making a fool of yourself on TV and then having to spend a lot of money on a rebrand, basically. And then there's a little box at the end of the story here which says yes or no. Girl, I fucking ticked yes. I ticked yes, because I do agree with this. But I actually kind of agree with a lot of stuff that Alexis is saying. You know, Drag Race, to me, now, it's not what it was. This is just my two cents, you know. It's not what it was. In terms of Drag Race, the series, I actually stopped watching it a little while ago. Because I kind of became bored of it as a franchise, really, where, you know, I just remember like i was at uni i remember the whole thing with rupaul saying that trans women weren't allowed to compete on the race because of having breasts and things and it was an unfair advantage la 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 all of this you know which to most people in the queer community that all sounded like a load of rubbish and we were all like mm, nah you know this isn't really how you do it you know it didn't the show didn't represent the drag scenes that we were seeing when we went out locally it just represented like a small pocket of drag and i know the reddit guys are gonna be popping off i was just sat here thinking and i, I often have these thoughts about a lot of things and i'm like i'm always not gonna put them on social media just because i can't be asked to get into it but i was just thinking i was like for a franchise when you look at films like halloween or scream they've been going on for a long time and i love that i love the cult fan base but I feel like Drag Race is just not it. Like, they've branched out into every possible venue they can, from Vegas residencies to franchises to fucking iPhone games to you name it. RuPaul is obviously, like, 106 now, so I know he's obviously trying to, like, cash in before he logs off, but surely they've run out of, like, actual superstars. I never talked about this, but I might as well have fucking gone on Drag Race because every time I've ever done an interview with any magazine or anything I've ever achieved, it always comes back to Drag Race. It's always how Alexis Stone did it without Drag Race, and I always on my for fuck's sake. I'm always, I'm always fucking talking about it, but I've not been on it. So it has one of been one of those things that's kind of like followed me around. Um, look. I think it serves its purpose. I think it's really beautiful how it's like shed a really amazing light on what is drag and the stories behind it. But when it comes to the art of drag and like the end result, for me personally, this is not drag. I want to present the world with the end result. I don't want to be making toilet humours and like making a fool out of myself and like worrying about how I come across in a confessional out of drag, which for me has got nothing to do with drag. Um, but that's just my views on it. I know I have a um, a different threshold, I guess. 
the kids are given, what is it, 15, 20 seconds at the end of every episode to showcase their drag. To a really shit, stupid theme to fit a TV narrative like dressing up as a fucking fruit bowl or like a look inspired by your favourite hometown. That is not the fantasy. This is the fantasy, mom. Like, this is the end goal. Like a show that celebrates the art that is drag. Each individual without these silly takes to try and squish in like a Z-list celebrity that's already working within the BBC. Um... I would much rather look at that than look at this in a confessional, crying. But tomorrow I'm going to be uploading some really cool content promoting a show that I do actually really stan and I think is the future. So you can look for that post tomorrow. Anyone starts to jump up my ass as a viewer, which the fuck I am, bitch, I am allowed an opinion. The same way y'all are allowed opinions in your weird group chats with all the gays dissecting what was spoken about. I am allowed an opinion. What happens with TV though, I remember when Bad Girls came out, that was my jam. That was my jam years ago. And then obviously it changed because times change and it's like Drag Race, like RuPaul obviously made lots of swooping comments last year about him not feeling like Drag Race was the right platform for trans people to be on. And there was a huge backlash. So as times change, they've started to invite a lot more diverse characters um, onto the show. It's a fucking business, okay? It's called reading the room. People vote with their money. People are not going to watch it if they don't feel like they're being spoken for or they're being represented. So this show is bigger than RuPaul itself. Um, I think we all know, or we can all imagine how RuPaul feels um, when he goes into work, gets paid 100000 and then leaves. He goes back to the fucking ranch. He's done very well. He's a very successful artiste. Um... But TV networks, it's a business, okay? Don't be a piece in the business. I personally am not willing to be a piece within a board game that makes a lot of people a lot of money. When you sign your life away, your medical notes, all this stuff, it wasn't something that I was willing to do. Because um, I know my worth. And I've done it without them. But for Drag Race, it does serve its purpose for a lot of people. A lot of these young queens, they just want to be on the road and they want to tour and they want to make money. And it's really hard to do that in drag, especially now without going on the drag or without going on the show. Um, so I do get it. It serves its purpose. This is kind of like the unspoken tea that all the girls talk about behind closed doors. But I hope, if anything, it just sheds a bit of light on it that it's just a fucking TV show, okay? And it's not particularly good. This is also not me bashing any of my friends. I've met some of the most incredible, hardworking, talented people that do more than me when it comes to a schedule. I could not do the, the sleeping, the drinking, all of that stuff. But we all talk like this. The girls that have been on the show, it's kind of like the unspoken word. Um, even the dolls get bored of talking about fucking Drag Race. You think they want to sit there every fucking week and talk about shit that happened a week before that didn't actually happen the way it has been edited to look in a show. It's tiring for everyone on the fucking show. Um, just my thoughts. Obviously, my DMs are, like, going crazy at the moment. All the dolls are messaging me. <coughs> Another thing that all the dolls are sick of is all you scraggly-ass twinks telling them that their drag is not good enough or refined. Shut up, girl. Shut up, girl. It costs a lot of fucking money to dress and get nice costumes and nice hairlines and fucking work done, bitch, just so you little scraggy ass twinks stop fucking going, oh, you look like a man. You try to do it, bitch, because you're the first one asking us to transform you when it gets to fucking Halloween. I will also say this. This is my last, like, peace out thing because my stories are getting long and I hate talking about fucking drag. Um, drag race also comes with its cons especially when it comes to like marking your fees most queens are getting paid like 1500 to get a performing gig in a nightclub if you're good at what you do maybe like 6000 if you're really good like 10 I know that sounds like a lot of money but a lot of money goes into it um, when you're in a franchise like drag race and they're pumping out seasons left right and centre you really kind of like shoot yourself in the foot with being bracketed under a drag drag race booking fee as an artist, which again, no one talks about, which has always shocked me because I meet so many girls and they 
tell me what they're charging, and I'm like, you are selling yourself short. Just because you're on a show with fucking ten other queens doesn't mean what you do in terms of what you bring back a venue or a brand. I'm in the art of art and business, okay? They come hand in hand. You can be an incredible artist. You can also be an incredibly broke artist. That doesn't work with me. So it's all about utilizing and recognizing what it is that you bring, whether it's promoting a venue, bringing in a crowd, you're on a TV show with viewing parties, they're asking you to perform so they can bring a crowd in, so they can sell more drinks at the bar. Everyone is winning from this show, but the queens, okay? So cash in on it. We also live in the day of social media, so you best be getting those fucking 10, 20, 30,000 pound brand deals, okay? Because <laughs> I sure as hell did. There you go. So Alexis is throwing a lot of shade, but is it shade? Because at the end of the day, it's the truth, you know? I honestly do agree with a lot of what Alexis said there, you know, I hear stories, we all hear stories of people coming out of drag race and then being broke because they've spent loads of money on their costumes for the show, you know, they've pretty much bankrupted themselves to go on the show, to have all the costumes made, etc, etc. We hear stories like this all the time. And then there was the whole thing with like Drag Race Season 2 UK, the casting, people were saying it wasn't diverse enough because there was what, you know, two POC queens and then they put one lesbian in as like a token lesbian, which for me, that's something that I've been waiting for ever since the beginning of Drag Race. So I, I was watching Drag Race since season one and I never ever saw a lesbian on it until now, season two, Drag Race UK or season three, is it? And they've decided, oh yeah, we'll put Victoria Scone on there. I'm like, you know, this has been a thing for so long, so many years, you know, I know of so many assigned female at birth artists who perform in drag, female drag, you know, and I just think it sucks it's taken this amount of time for the show to actually try and attempt to represent what we see when we go out to clubs. Like, I haven't been out to a club in a little while with the pandemic and everything. I just sort of, you know, tended to stay at home more because... I wanted to be safe but now that the world's getting back to normal you know I do want to go out I do want to get back into it but like I just find it really really bizarre that the show has taken this long to try and catch up with the queer world that's outside outside of drag race you know I just think it's like a bit piss poor so like we've still yet to see a trans man or a drag king on drag race like come on we're waiting you know it's been way too long like how long has that fucking show been going for now like what oh 10 years or something and we still haven't seen a trans man well got mick in america first trans man to be on that show but what about the uk seasons you know and it took how long for got mick to be a contestant on drag race like where was the love for trans men before that you know, and also drag kings. I'm pissed that we never see any drag kings on Drag Race. You know, this is all part of the art form. And it's like just ignoring half of the community. You know, to me, that's what it looks like. Drag Race just doesn't represent the real queer world. I actually much prefer Dragula as a show. To me, Dragula has always been much more open-minded with the casting. The challenges are better. You know, I actually prefer to watch that. I love Dragula. Brule Brothers, I love that. That show, to me, is amazing. That is awesome. You know, they've had Land and Cider, Drag King. They've had people who are straight and perform in drag on there. You know, they're not, like, close-minded about their casting. But Drag Race, to me, has been very close-minded because of RuPaul's idea of what drag is and it's like no this is very outdated now you know we know as queer people that this is very outdated now and it's like it's just frustrating it's just a little bit shit but 
I'm going to love you and leave you on this one. So please do let me know all your thoughts, comments and opinions on the whole Alexis versus Drag Race thing. Take care and I will see you soon on the next one. Bye-bye.